This is my go-to lighting for Zoom, streaming, webinars, anytime I need to be online. And it costs zero bucks, no studio lights. It's easy if you understand some basic principles of cinematography and what not to do. For example, I actually see this one a lot on Zoom. So here's a situation where I have one dead eye. There are some other problems with this lighting setup too, but we'll get to that in a second. Both eyes should catch the light. It's why photographers use something like this. Ah. But look, you don't need fancy stuff. Are you okay? You can emulate the look of professional tools if you understand what those tools are trying to achieve. So let's do a little crash course in cinematography because we need to understand what these tools are and how they work before we try and emulate them with stuff we have around the house. So in the studio, which is also my living room, I use two daylight colored lights, one on either side of me. But let's talk about the one on my right first. So this is my brightest light. It also has a modifier on it. It has a soft box. Modifiers are meant to diffuse light. Concentrated light tends to create some pretty aggressive shadows. So here's what it looks like if I take off the soft box with just this one light. Okay, the soft box is back on, but there's still a problem of too much shadowing on this side of my face, even if the shadows aren't as harsh as they were before. So how are we gonna fix this? We have Two ways we could do that. We could put a second light on me here to take care of the shadowing, or we could move this light right in front of my face. Okay, so the light is right in front of my face. Look, apart from it blinding me, a second problem with this is that it makes the image appear really flat. <laughs> you can see I cannot look at the camera. One light in front of my face is bad because it takes away too much shadow. People think shadows are the enemy, and it definitely is when you have overhead light on you like this. I see this one on Zoom too. This is the overhead light, undiffused and on top of my head. But keeping subtle shadows gives your face dimension. In terms of the kind of shadows we're looking for, we want them to be soft and we want them to be in flattering places. So not this. Ah. Instead, what we want are, we want some highlights on my eyes, on my cheeks, on my forehead, and then we want just enough soft shadows to show some dimensionality in my face. There should be no clear line from where the highlight stops and the shadow begins, and this is called highlight roll-off. And to get this, the highlights and the shadows that we want, we're gonna need more than one light. So here's the one light again. We've got some nice highlights, but we have too much shadow. So let's fix that with a second light on my left. Much better. Now I also have a third light on me, and that's a window to my right. So what this window is doing is it's creating a highlight here on my shoulder and it's highlighting my hair. Now the transition from highlight to shadow is really subtle because the window has a screen on it, making the light soft and diffused. Take a look at what it looks like if I have the blinds up. Now lighting's all about balance. I could try and counteract these hot highlights coming in with my other two studio lights. But you can see that they're not really a match for the sun. I mean, fair. So I'm gonna go ahead and screen that window. Great. So apart from highlights and shadows making for flattering lighting, it also makes for a more dimensional image. So this is a second reason why we wouldn't just put a single light shining right on my face because highlights and shadows are actually critical to making what is a 2D medium appear 3D. That is also why a backlight or as I'm using uh, a window side light is so important. It pops them out from the background. So the lighting setup that I've just described and what I use here in the studio is a three point lighting system. And if that sounds familiar, that's because a lot of cinematographers use it. It consists of a key light on one side, your brightest light, a fill light on the other to take care of some of that shadow, but not too much so that you still get some shadowing. So you still get some dimension and then a backlight to pop the subject out. Now it's worth mentioning that both of these lights are diffused. I'm using a soft box and an umbrella. And the reason for that is so that I don't get any harsh shadows. We need diffusion to create that nice highlight roll off. But you don't need any studio gear. In fact, this setup, my typical zoom setup, doesn't use any studio gear. So let's take everything we've learned 
and figure out how we can rebuild this from the ground up using only stuff you have around the house. Okay, let's build this out. All the lights are off. I'm sitting in front of an unscreened window. A problem here is that there's too much contrast. I'm too bright and the background is too dark. And I see this problem play out all the time. The issue of contrasts that are too severe, such as having too much light on one side of your face or having too much light behind you. I recommend sitting in front of a window, not having it to your side, definitely not having it to your back because it's so bright that it's gonna be difficult to balance. So big fan of natural light, but if you're really close to any one window, that window needs to be screened. Much better already. It's taking care of the contrast problem. Although the image is still quite dark and I'm quite blue because my curtains are blue. Now let's add a key and a fill. And here are the two that I've chosen. They're both gonna emit soft light. One of them has a lampshade the other one has exposed bulbs, but this light in particular has really low wattage. So it's gonna emit soft light because they're designed to have no shade on them. Great. Now I purposely put on a dark outfit so you can see how easy it is for me to blend into the background. We want that depth. So we're gonna need a backlight on. It's gonna separate me from the background, but it's also gonna add some interest. Okay, I think this is looking really good, but the background is still a little darker than I want it to be, and that's because it's a cloudy day and we're not getting a ton of ambient light from the window to brighten up this background. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the overhead light. You know how I feel about those, but the overhead light is behind me and it's not right on top of my head. So it's not going to create those unflattering shadows that I hate so much. This is looking pretty good, I think. The only way we can make it better is if my face was a bit brighter. I have three monitors. <laughs> I have three monitors and I use them as a light source too. And you can see how big of an impact they have on the lighting. Typically I put them on a sort of soft yellow and you can do this really easily by just opening a Word document and changing the paper color. All this time, I didn't know you could do this, but you just go to design and then page color and take your pick. So here's what it looks like with just my laptop screen. So you don't actually need to have a triple monitor setup to make this look really nice. Final tip, and this one's for any time that you're live online. Make sure you're streaming at the highest resolution that your internet can handle. And if you're using Zoom, there is an airbrushing option. Love it. You just go to settings here and then video. And that is also where you can enable HD. This is a brand new channel and I'm still deciding what it's about. But what I think it's about is how to optimize your web presence. I'm a marketing professor, but I'm also a huge plant, food, baking enthusiast and tech. So I put a button here in the corner is it? So I put a one click subscribe button here in the corner. Get pretty excited every time I get a new subscriber because I have two videos and like 30 subscribers. So while you're thinking about it, enjoy my fear of bounce boards. Typically uh, what you would use is something like this. This is a bounce board. So you just like, oh, it hit me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> like this. And then you go. By the way, I bought this studio for like 130 bucks on Amazon. So it's, uh, you know, you don't even, it doesn't even have to cost a lot if you want this to be a hobby. I've, I have the link down below. It's not affiliate, like no compensation. I just like the set. Um, yeah, I think it's a great value. I really don't need to be wearing an apron for this. 